Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Today I want to show you guys some of the beautiful locality bow holdbacks that I've been growing up that have been born over the last few years. And I'm really excited about these because these represent the future of my breeding projects here at Brian Boas. So holdbacks, as I've said numerous times, are one of my favorite things about breeding boas. I love looking at the next generation of babies and selecting my favorites that are going to carry their genes forward into my breeding projects. And it's, I think it's the best way to get really good breeders to hold back babies that are born at your facility, grow them up slowly, patiently, and then when they reach around five years or so, they're ready for breeding. These animals have been born here. They've never experienced any conditions from any outside source. And so I know exactly how they've been grown and I can grow them exactly as I want them. And as a result, they end up being really, really good breeders. Definitely better than getting breeding stock from another source that has to acclimate to your particular conditions. So I thought I'd start off with the Suriname True Red Tails because these are really my bread and butter. And uh, you know, about a quarter or so of the animals in my collection are Suriname Red Tails. And I bred them pretty much every year since I started. So I thought I'd show you some Surinams of different ages starting with the 2021. And this is actually a really nice one from 2021. This is a Prometheus bloodline male. This was one of the rare babies that just really stood out from the litter. And I knew as soon as he was born that he was gonna be on my holdback. He just had this beautiful light pinkish coloration. You know, really nice markings as well. And I'm really happy with how he's developing. He's pretty good size. This guy's now a year old. So this is, he's actually larger than my other, some of my other Surinams from my other litter that I held back last year. And he's really mellow, really nice guy. This is one of the uh, few animals I've named. I call, I call this guy Pink Floyd. I had to have a Pink Floyd in my, collect, in my collection being that I like, you know, Pink Floyd the band. But a really nice animal. Really looking forward to watching this guy grow up. And you know, it's gonna be a little while before he's ready to breed, but definitely a worthy breeder here at Brian Boas. Next, we have a uh, Suriname red tail holdback. It's a year older from 2020. And so this guy is actually from my other main bloodline, which I call my Picasso bloodline. And I really wanted to use this guy for the video. Unfortunately, he's in shed, so he's not as colorful as he would normally be. Um, but the reason I wanted to show you guys this one is he's not all that much bigger than the animal I just showed you that's a year younger. And in fact, he was a little bit small for a while, just one of the smaller ones, and he didn't grow quite as fast for his first year or so. In fact, I used him for my series on comparing the sizes of true red tail videos, which I've done several of. But uh, lately he's been looking like he's really starting to look like he's not a baby anymore. He's getting this more square body shape and look, looking more muscular overall. Also losing the, the gray coloration that he had, you know, tints of. But this guy I really like because he's really light and pinkish with some purple overtones, really nice shaped saddles. Um, but just, you know, not growing quite as fast as some of my other animals. You know, so if your animal's not growing quite as fast, as long as it's growing slowly but steadily, you know, that's what's important. So don't obsess about the size of your boa or, you know, worry about what other people are saying or how big other people's boas are. You know, just do what's best for your own animal. But this is a real nice male from my other main bloodline and, you know, should definitely continue the project well into the next generation. Okay, one more Suriname I want to show you guys. I've got so many really nice Surinams. I could just do a whole video on Surinams, but just one more. This is actually a 2017 holdback. So this female is now about five, a little bit over five, close to five and a half years old. And she's not quite ready to breed, not, just not quite big enough. You know, sometimes they reach breeding size at this age. Sometimes they need another year or even two years. So hopefully we'll be able to breed this female in 2024. She probably put, needs to put on about a foot or so. But I wanted to show you guys this female just because um, as I mentioned, all Surinams, all boas grow at different rates, and you shouldn't be obsessed about your boa's growth rate. 
Um, this female, you know, if she takes six, seven, even eight years to reach breeding size, so be it, you know. You want to do what's best for your boa, you don't want to, you know, rush them or force them. I also wanted to show you her because she's really, really developing nicely. Really beautiful pink coloration. A uh, really nice look. This is actually a Prometheus bloodline. She's from the second litter that I had from Prometheus himself, which had a different mother from the first litter. And so I'm really excited that I can potentially breed this female to one of my Prometheus bloodline males that has a different mother. So there'll be half siblings, not full siblings, you know, to get in some genetic diversity there. Uh, but just a really, really beautiful looking animal. She's a little bit, um, um, Amsi, she's not t completely tame. You can see she's uh, not settling down. She's not aggressive. She just doesn't really like being held. Just a little bit skittish. And that's how they are sometimes. She probably would calm down if I held her regularly. But uh, really nice animal to continue the Prometheus bloodline of Suriname boas. Next we have another true red tail holdback. This is a Pacalpa Peruvian true red tail. This one was born in 2020 and had a small litter in 2020. I didn't have any in 2021, unfortunately. And this year I just had one small litter of just four babies. So unfortunately the Peruvians have been a little harder for me to breed consistently than the Surinams. Um, we'll have to see what happens this year. But this is a really nice male. Uh, he's probably close to four feet at this point, maybe three and a half feet. Starting to develop his real nice golden coloration. And so these animals uh, they tend to grow a little faster than the Surinams. We'll have to see, he'll probably be ready to breed in another two to three years. You know, the males can breed a little younger than the females. But right now he's still in a, kind of my grow out rack, which holds the 28 quart tubs. But he's at the size where pretty soon I'm gonna have to move him into either one of the boa tubs or into maybe a four foot reptile cage. Um, because he's, you know, put on some good size, but real nice animal, nice musculature, beautiful color, nice long red tail. You know, everything I want in a Peruvian to take his genes into the next generation. Here's a really nice holdback Hog Island boa. This uh, female was born in 2019. And so I have a couple bloodlines of Hog Islands. I've got some pure Sears bloodline that came from Vin Russo. I've also got an unknown bloodline that I got from uh, Ron Greenberg from Ron's Reptiles. And um, I have some holdbacks from the pure Sears bloodline. This is actually a cross between the Sears bloodline and the bloodline that I got from Ron Greenberg. And I really like these the best. I think because they have this other bloodline, they're a little bit darker than the pure Sears, but they have a lot more color, beautiful uh, pinks and oranges and even some purples and greens and blues. A little bit more speckling but just a really nice, beautiful looking Hog Island Boa. I didn't get any Hog Island Boas in 2022. I had them paired up, but I think my male, my Sears Bloodline male is getting a little bit old maybe. Maybe he just wasn't in the mood. Um, this year, I'm hopeful that I will be successful. I've got uh, some younger male of the pure Sears Bloodline that I held back. And so I'm gonna be using those in my breeding trials. Um, this female probably won't be ready for another, I would say, at least two years to breed. But just real beautiful. Look at those pink sides. Just a gorgeous looking example of a hog island boa. Here's another small boa. This is a Tarhimara boa, or you know, arguably the smallest locality of them all. This is a female born here in 2018. And this female is probably about the minimum size you would want to use for breeding. But she's not quite, you know, I, I feel like she's not quite ready to breed. So she's probably about four feet. Uh, you know, hopefully this year she'll put on another, you know, six inches or so and get a little bit girthier, uh, be a little bit better shape for breeding. So maybe in 2024, this female will breed. But, you know, real nice looking female. Love the pink on the sides and got this really nice circle back pattern down her back. Just a real beautiful animal. And as you know, the Tower Humar have gotten super popular lately. I had a small litter in 2022 and they went lightning fast. I'm hoping to get some more in 2023. I've got some older ones that I have paired up. 
but it's not hard to understand why these are so popular because they have this really nice convenient size, beautiful patterns, beautiful colors, enjoyable to handle, not aggressive, just a real great type of locality boa. I think the fact that they've also been compared to mini Argentine boas helps because people like Argentine boas so much and if you can get one in a smaller body package, you know, all the better if you're into, you know, smaller types of things like that. But beautiful 2018 holdback female. Uh, just really enjoyed growing this one up. Here's another dwarf boa. This guy was born in 2020. This is a Crawl Key dwarf boa from Crawl Key Island off the coast of Belize. And so you can see even at two years old, this guy is still pretty tiny. I would say he's not quite three feet, maybe, you know, two and three quarters feet or so. Um, you know, over the last couple years, he's gotten a little bit more square looking. He's also, his color has gotten a little more silvery. But still, you know, very small animal. But this is what the size that they're supposed to be at around two years of age. This guy is a full sibling to the litter that I produced this year. So if you guys got one of my babies from this year, this is what he or she will probably look like in about two years from now. But just a really great dwarf boa. This one, you can see, has kind of jungly looking saddles. They're kind of a little bit aberrant. And then he's got some striping towards his tail. Just a really cool look. Um, I actually have some older animals, some older holdbacks that I paired up this year. So we'll hopefully get some more of these babies this year. Uh, but we'll have to see, you know, the breeding season has just started, so not quite sure if any activity has happened yet or if, if I'm going to be successful. But I really like these little dwarf crawl key boas, and generally speaking, they're, you know, pretty straightforward to breed. So hopeful that we'll have some more of these in the summer. Just a couple more holdbacks to share with you. Both of these remaining two are from last year, from 2021. So this guy I actually hadn't looked at for a little bit. And I just took them out and I've just kind of wowed me. This is actually a Honduran fire belly boa. And so this is a male that I held back. You can see he's mostly patternless, you know, doesn't really have any saddles for a lot of his body. But just check out that orange color just on his sides and belly. And the, you know, also the, the thing I really like about these guys, look at that head. He's got this short, really stocky looking head and these bright orange eyes, just a, you know, amazing looking boa. You know, I just kind of was a little bit breathless when I took this guy out, actually. You know, I got to get my good still camera, get some really nice photos of this guy. Well, he's, he's looking so good. Um, but just a really cool boa, you know, supposedly from the island of Roatan, off the coast of Honduras, although that uh, it's not exactly 100%, you know, sure if that's where these guys came from. But it's a, it's a bloodline established by Dennis Sargent back in the late 90s. And these guys are pure Honduran boas, possibly from that island, as I mentioned, that have this beautiful orangey belly color. They're also really rare and hard to find, so I'm hoping I can keep the project going. Honestly, I don't really know many other, I don't think I know anyone else who's working with these guys these days. So it would really be a shame if the project went extinct and they weren't produced anymore. Hopefully I'm not the last one breeding these guys, but really like them and uh, just check out that distinctive look of this Honduran fire belly boa. Okay, one more boa to share with you. This is a long tail or longicata boa, also from 2021. This girl was soaking in her water dish, that's why she's a little bit wet. And I found that my longicata seemed to soak more than my other locality boas. So I don't know if it's because they're preparing for shedding or they just like the soaking. But uh, at least in my experience, they are the locality that soaks the most. And so this female is already starting to show quite a bit of uh, increase in dark pigment since she was born. These are really interesting boa that gets darker in color over time. Every shed they get a little bit more melanin until as adults they look pretty much nothing like the babies. They have a lot more dark colors and they've got these beautiful dark stripes on their head and the top of their head and the sides of their face. They also get a lot of speckling on the belly as they get bigger. 
So this female will continue to develop more pigment until about four years from now when she reaches sexual maturity and she assumes her adult coloration. This is from uh, the Bisset bloodline. I had another litter of these this year from the from Vin Russo's bloodline. Uh, in fact, I've got the Bisset breeders going this year, so with any luck, I should have some full siblings to this female. She's a little wet there. Some full siblings that are gonna be born over the summer. And these are really straightforward bows to work with. They're not aggressive. They're really chilled to handle. They seem to be relatively easy to breed from my experience. Just a great animal to work with. They definitely have a cult following. You know, people that like these and work with them seem to really, really like them. And there are people that uh, work with no other type of bow. So Lanchicata, definitely recommended for a locality boa collection. So I hope you enjoyed this video, this look at some of my holdbacks. These guys will be moving into breeding trials over the next few years. So really excited about, you know, the breeding trials ahead. Uh, as always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to shoot me a line. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.